welcome students to my lecture number 48 on combine harvester in fact if you have uh, undergone my earlier lecture you might have seen that i have talked of uh, the uh, harvesting equipment various types of harvesting equipment for cereals root crops fruit crops vegetables etc and then i said at one point of time that combine harvester uh, combine means that you have various operations for cutting then uh, threshing and then cleaning uh, and then bagging so all these are operations which are taking together and that's why we call this machine as combine or also known as combine harvester so we would talk about this particular combine harvester we would also talk about suppose you have to test this uh, such a combine then what is the procedure you should follow what are the parameters that you should measure and how you should uh, certify because these machines are also available in the market and the consumer would like to take a product which is acceptable to the farmer and uh, which doesn't give a lot of losses because the losses are one of the important parameters uh, of this particular machines so if the losses are very high they will not be accepted by the consumer or the farmer here in question so let us have a look at this combine what are its details well uh, here i would, i would so i will let you know that the various uh, functions of the combine cutting picking windrowing and conveying uh, threshing separating the seeds chaff and uh, chaff from the straw cleaning the uh, uh, the uh, debris uh, chaff and other things from the uh, from the actual grains now process or diagram of the combine harvester here what is the process of in fact if you see that there is a reel and this reel is the job of this reel is to bring the crop closer and then the cutter bar is there so this cutter the crops are brought together and they have small uh, small uh, uh, you can see the rods and those rods move and they try to bring the crop closer and the um, cutter bar is there below which will cut and then they are conveyed you can see here that the conveying um, <clears throat> yes uh, actually uh, these will go on to the threshing drum and um, once they are threshed and uh, let's go through the details of the combine harvester what are the various functions of uh, combine uh, it includes cutting picking windrowing conveying and then threshing separating the seeds and chaff from the straw cleaning the cha uh, chaff and other debris from the seed and bagging now these are the different uh, operations which are there in this now we will like to have some details of this and where they are done in fact this is a process diagram which is given gathering initial gathering when the reel is there in, in front the reel gathers the um, plants and then the cutter bar is there so this is the reel which is um, this is the reel here then this is here the auger and there is a cutter bar is over here then this this is one for conveying this is one for uh, threshing this is the location where this is which is known as straw walker and then after this the the, the there is a blower here there is a fan which will try to um, after harvesting and the straw will go away from here and the thrust grain will fall into this and then this will be in fact then taken and put to bag so this is this is the process there are more details are all given in this particular diagram once you go through this diagram you will be in a position to understand each and every aspect but these are the details of a particular combine so as such uh, as i told earlier combine harvester is that combining several operations and functions now let's uh, see more details of this particular uh, device and the equipment sorry unit operations and relevant losses in the combine yes it is very important to know that whether this uh, cutting and gathering see when the the machine is working in the field there are various losses now you remember as i told you in the beginning that uh, the crop must be harvested at a certain moisture content if the moisture content is uh, very low that means the crop is very dry so there will be a losses because the moment machine touches the plant there will be shattering losses they will just shatter then there are losses which will so cutting and gathering so during cutting and gathering there will be losses taking place we we can check in here 
the cutting and gathering cutting and gathering conveying assembly known as header includes reel and cutter bar yes this is there then header sh should be adjustable to obtain height of cut very important if the height of cut is very much high then you need to cut this again so this is important and it varies from this to uh, about uh, ranging from 5 cm to at least 100 cm i think this is too much uh, 100 cm is about 1 meter or so but uh, this is very on the higher side generally we would not like to go more than 3 to 4 inches or so and it has been seen that in working condition uh, about 20 to 15 to 20 centimeters or so now these this is the reel which is in there and this reel has a small if you can see this that this reel has small uh, bars and these bars collect the um, material and the cutter bar is below here which will cut now these are the other portions of the machine which we have discussed let us see what are the relevant losses the losses are important at each and every aspect uh, let us say when a cutting takes place as I said if the cutting is uh, not proper uh, moisture content then the loss will start just while taking a, touching itself then uh, when it is being conveyed there will be loss when it is uh, and being thrust there will be losses then there will be losses when the blower is there whether some of the um, good grains will uh, go away some of the good grains will also be on the straw walker when the straw is going along with that if proper threshing is not done then there will be losses on that so these are the losses which are relevant to the various unit operations which happen in combined proper operation of the reel yes if the proper operation of the reel will not take place as i said then shattering losses will take we call them shatter losses then cutter bar losses if the cutter bar um, uh, see the pots etc may fall on that itself so they will remain because they, they, those could not be picked up because the crop has been cut and it has been conveyed for threshing but those pots and some of the grains which will be there in the cutter bar they will be left there and maybe sometimes left in the field itself so that is another loss factors affecting header loss now what are the factors have affecting header loss cutting height yes at what height you are cutting this is there will be a loss which is taking place reel position with respect to the cutter bar what is the position of the reel many a times if the reel is not properly aligned with respect to the cutter bar then also there will be losses taking place because when you um, come across the um, plants there will be di um, uh, deflected uh, differently as compared to what is required then real speed with respect to the forward speed yes this is very important in fact we will also show you through a problem that what is the importance of real speed with respect to the forward speed of travel the um, if they are at uh, not unison then you will find that uh, the proper um, action is not taking place and losses will be uh, increasing so position of the reel where is the position of the reel in fact as i said the position of the reel should be at the in the front of this now what is important here is see optimum reel position is determined by the crop height this is very important what is the uh, height of the crop because uh, depending upon the variety of the crop that has been taken the height will also vary short term short duration varieties short height of the varieties but mm, uh, uh, high yielding varieties depending on the height uh, so you have to be careful and amount of straw cut and the condition of the straw so on the basis of this you have to position the reel with respect to the cutter bar the normally the reel should be set to the to um, so that when in the lowest position it will strike at least 15 to 25 centimeter above and slightly ahead of the cut cutter bar this is very important you see that normally this is what we require and why because we want that uh, the crop height has been taken care of the lodged crops yes this is one of the big problems should be set further back in fact this is one of the biggest problems of the uh, uh, combines or for any harvesting equipment uh, harvesting machine because uh, many a times uh, just to at the time of harvesting you will find that there will be a storm sort of thing and then whole crop is completely lodged and completely in the uh, flat position in the field and it is very difficult so um, uh, uh, god forgive this situation should not come but then they do um, uh, come sometimes uh, and uh, we lose a lot of crops so for that in fact uh, there are specific arrangements have to be made in fact some of the arrangements in the machines are made and then uh, they are cut in such a way that uh, we could recover most of the uh, crop 
Now, what I was talking with respect to the reel here, uh, I said that there has to be proper uh, speed of the reel and the forward speed of the machine. Now, this reel index is very important. That is why a reel index have been given here. Now, this need to be maintained. So, the value of this, it is recommended that the peripheral uh, speed of the reel should be about 25 to 50 percent faster than the forward speed of the machine. Or, in other words, what do you see? That reel index should be 1.5 to 1.5. Uh, this is what it is. So, it is very important because remember that if the reel is not there, you, you are simply not cutting the uh, crop in the proper position and the lot of losses will take place. It is not gathering in front of the cutter bar. So, these are very important to learn uh, what is the reel index and what should be the value maintained. Well, uh, well, we have it, since it is a component. Although uh, we are, we will be teaching threshing separately in the second uh, lecture lectures after this. But then, since uh, it is, it forms the part of uh, combined. So I have shown you here. I would like to briefly talk about this. Maybe details of the design, etc., will take up uh, later in a later session of the classes. But here we will uh, briefly tell you what are the ASR and what are the various types which are used. See the types generally mm, used in the combined rest bar cylinder type, uh, axial flow, cross flow and spike tooth cylinder. Now, you can see that these are spike tooth cylinder ones, this is given here, rest bar type, this is one which is rest bar type and spike tooth in fact, uh, mm, is some of the uh, you can see that these spikes which are there rotary cutters have. Now, separation what do we how do we separate all these things straw walker action in a conventional bit. what is the action of the straw walker in fact uh, you can see here that after the thresher now what is this is what is this going on here and uh, you can see these details so the separation is grain separation in combined refers to the separation of the grains from the straw after threshing this is what is exactly is being shown here so when a large percentage 70 to 90 percent of the grains are separated during threshing process itself here itself because they were separated from the straw. But then the, this process when it is going the straw walker that is why it is known as straw walker. In fact, there are uh, it is purposely made so that whatever is left will be separated further. Types of grains the separators are commonly used in the combines two types of grains only conventional combines use straw walkers and rotary combines use rotary separators. Now, these will help uh, further uh, removing uh, not much, but then we do all lose some of the crop um, uh, grains here also. So, these are some of the other aspects of the combine which we have. We have talked of the cutting, we have talked of the reel, we have talked of the relationship between the rotation of the reel and the forward speed of the machine, then we have talked of the threshing, then we have talked of the separating separation. So, let us see what else are the parts and how do we um, understand that. Cleaning very important because you have uh, got the um, uh, job done, but then cleaning is very important because uh, otherwise you will need people to clean that. Um, generally what is manually how people clean is once the grains are threshed, they will have uh, um, blowers made and then the whole um, uh, the chaff and the grains are clean. In the machine uh, we would like to do this. So, how these are done? See the this particular diagram which we have picked up uh, from the literature and the references given here. You will see that how we are trying to create and uh, clean it. Cleaning refers to the final separation of the grain from the crop material mainly chaff and broken straw um, pieces are there with this. Cleaning shoe consists of two or three oscillating adjustable opening sieves, pedal type, fan and blower through the sieve opening. So, that you can see here and these are the this is the grain pan here, these are the fingers here. Now, this is the cleaner um, clean seed auger uh, here, then this is the uh, trail uh, trailing auger and these are the adjustable um, flats. You now, here is the one which will blow. So, the chaff gets blown off the air and the grains falls through the openings. Now, this will fall through the openings of this and uh, those will be 
the other um, portion uh, other portion will be uh, moved to the uh, outside the, the chaff etcetera. So, the separation occurs due to difference in the terminal velocities of the grain and chaff material. The chaff is lighter one and this is this. So, when the uh, speed of the blower is uh, blowing air, so depending upon the uh, density or uh, the uh, velocity of the grain, uh, these will fall because the grain is um, heavier than the chaff. So, the chaff will be thrown off and the grain will be uh, in fact lifted and then um, uh, brought to the bagging side. So, this is the operation which takes place. The schematic diagram is shown in cleaning, sewing and auger bed for feeding the grain chaff mixture. This happens in the cleaning, cleaning process of the combine. Now, these are the various types of combines. It is I think uh, worth uh, going about these and having a look at it. In fact, uh, there is a question mark which uh, you might have um, you would like to ask me that why these big machines in the country like ours where 60 percent of the people are having smaller um, smaller uh, fields um, less than one hectare or so. So, all small fields only 10 percent of the farms are very big, but here now the economics engineering economics works into play. So, you have to think of uh, this part uh, because then uh, if you do not uh, consider this economics, you will have to have a small farm, uh, farmer having a small farm, he will have to have 5, 6 machines. See for example, he will have to have machine, I might have also give a reference of the same thing in my um, uh, first lecture or so, that he will have to have machines for each and every operation. See the first operation is the preparation of the land, then second operation will be the uh, seeding third operation will be uh, weeding, fourth operation plant protection and then harvesting, threshing and then uh, bagging etcetera and then transport. So, for each and everything he has to look for small, small machines and then that way you will find that he has to have power source and even many a times these small machines uh, will not be that much effective even the person would like to do it faster than that. So, we have to be very careful about this because if the if we, he has to purchase so many machines and to maintain them there will be a problem now in order that he doesn't have to maintain this but if he can rent it he can uh, hire these machines and get the thing done in fact we will show you some of these machines which are being operated all over the country in fact from the northern belt from ludhiana and other north of india they come to the various parts of the uh, country in the eastern parts in West Bengal and I will show you some of these videos which have been operated uh, here and being operated and um, about 20, 25, 30 percent of these um, uh, machines are um, very much popular in this area. And so, custom hiring or the concept of uh, self help groups or you can create a group, uh, engineers can come together and uh, have groups uh, or maintain a set of machines. Mm, such machines uh, which will give you either a combine or a combined harvester or you can think of 2, 3 machines together for a crop setting or for a crop rotation. And once those machines are there with you, it is possible that uh, you can rent and uh, it will be easier for the farmer. He will get um, without having any botheration about the, about the owning of the machine, the maintenance of the machine and uh, its um, shelter and then paying the insurance and things like that. He will have to just pay per uh, unit of um, time and get the work done and have his machine um, uh, have uh, do not have the machine and have the crop bag in his uh, um, farm yard. So, for that uh, the various machines are available. Now, I will show you what are these self propelled multi crop combined harvester um, one which is available mini combine harvester this is a small machines which are also available then wheel type and track type. In fact, sometimes what happens even in West Bengal here we have seen that uh, um, uh, water logging is there and the crop is ready to be harvested. So, at that time these, uh, these wheel machines, wheel type ones are very difficult to be operated. Tractor mounted multi crop combined harvester. Now, there are machines which are available in some of the manufacturers in uh, Ludhiana and other parts uh, in, in northern belt, they are, they are there and they have the combines which are uh, tractor mounted, they are mounted onto the tractor and taking power from there for the operation of the 
uh, whole system. Then track type combines, yes you know, as I said the track type combines uh, are very popular nowadays because of the you know, slicing conditions of the field. And as I said uh, uh, in particularly in West Bengal we have seen that uh, because of the time at the time when uh, the crop is ready for harvesting you will find that uh, uh, the whole field is filled up. So, it is not possible. So, these machines are working very well and uh, in fact they are very as I said earlier they are very much being taken on custom hiring basis. Now, let us have a look at the operation of these machines. Now, you see this machine this is being operated in one of the farmers in uh, very in, uh, uh, in West Midnapur of West Bengal uh, near to uh, IIT Kharagpur and we have taken this uh, video from, uh, it to, to let you know that this is being operated in our country and uh, people are using it and on custom hiring basis. These uh, machines have been brought uh, from, uh, you, from Ludhiana and uh, they are being uh, operated in the field and it is cheaper for them. In fact, on a minute basis because as I said the machine uh, the uh, area is very small. So, on a minute basis they pay. So, if, if, if his job is done in 20 minutes he will pay for 20 minutes accordingly. So, by minute uh, is the cost that they charge for working with these uh, such machines and it is um, worth having a look at the operation of such machines. You can see this how they are being operated and uh, there is absolutely no problem uh, uh, the farmer faces. So, you can see the, uh, the front side drill and the back at uh, you can see at the back and then the, uh, the details of this falling at this details of this whole machine you can see all the uh, operations being taking place. Let us have operation of uh, this um, wheel type uh, mini combine. This wheel type mini combine you see the operation here. Uh, this is a small machine um, and uh, its operation is um, well acceptable because the cost is less. So, farmer who can afford he will be in a position to get this, but this is a wheel type. So, if the condition is better this is there is no problem here, but if the uh, field is slushy and uh, even some ponding of water is there uh, then uh, you will require a different type of machine. And I will show you that we have track type uh, such machines are also there. So, this is, it is being operated very near to IIT Kharagpur and that is why we have these videos here uh, for your uh, uh, I mean visual uh, appreciation that uh, look these machines avail are available. So, those who are not agriculture engineers if they will look at this they will know that these machines are available and those who are there uh, agriculture engineers they will try to appreciate the principles behind which they are there and what is the economics of uh, working with these machines. You can uh, see that all the bagging or details are there you can have a look at this all the operations are being done. You can see the hips being created and kept in the field. Now, let us see the um, track type one. Operation of the track type one. This is the track type. You can see the big tracks are there. Uh, have a look at these tracks. You can see the tracks and uh, see you can see the whole area. In fact, you can see at various locations. This is a case of West Bengal where people say that mechanization has not reached the mechanization about uh, I can say that about 20 25 percent of the farmers are using these machines and uh, maybe many have purchased many have uh, using it these are custom hiring basis many are using the ones which has come from uh, other locations in the country.
well, performance of the combined harvester. Now, uh, as I told that you should be also in a position to understand that uh, what is this, what are these machines and how they can be uh, they tested. So, what are the details of this? If you are asked to test the details of these machines, well, you will have to go about uh, these these information. Say the combined capacity. What is the capacity of the combine? You must measure the capacity of the combine, find out what is the feed rate, etc., and uh, at what are the different types of losses. What are the various efficiencies like cleaning efficiency? How clean the task is? Or what is the field efficiency? How much uh, hectare per hour it is uh, doing? And then what is the threshing efficiency? etc. What are the thresh grains? So, these are the, some of the important informations which are uh, essential. Feed rates, what are the different feed rates? You, you must know what are the different feed rates, the grain feed rate, the material uh, material other than grain uh, feed rate, what is that feed rate? We are very, I mean these um, details you will have to uh, measure, you will have to record and then uh, put it to the uh, person who has given uh, this for testing. Uh, total feed rate, you will have to see what is the total feed rate, sum of the grain feed rate and the uh, materials other than grain feed rate. So, total feed rate also will be essential and you should be in a position to inform the person who has given you. Then losses, these are very important. In fact, the, the machines uh, are rejected and uh, accepted on the basis of the losses. So, the Bureau of Indian Standards have uh, check, uh, put a check on this that maximum combined losses should not be more than 2.5 percent for rice, wheat and gram and uh, 4 percent for soya bean. Now, this is the uh, limiting value, the maximum value of losses which you take in. So, that is why the manufacturer have to get it tested and see that their losses, total losses are uh, uh, maintaining or being complied with, the, with these values, these data. The collectible losses, what are the um, losses uh, happening which could have been collected? For example, the header um, grain loss the from the thresher, unthressed, damaged grains, etcetera, then from the cleaning unit, grading unit, then uh, some of the header loss, sue loss, rock loss, secondary blower losses. Yeah, these are the locations where the um, losses do take place. So, the manufacturer has to take care of all the details and see that we do not lose the crop. Then the processing losses. Uh, for the loss of grain terms in uh, in terms of the damage which has then unthressed, thrust, uh, uh, thrust obtained after completion of the threshing and all that. So, these are the different types of losses which was one must keep in mind and keep a record of this if he has to certify a particular um, uh, device. Uh, the header loss very important, the cylinder loss, what are the losses which um, the thrust cylinder losses take place, the rack losses and the sue losses. Now, these are the losses which the manufacturers when they give and the engineer as an engineer you would be interested to measure this, record this and then put it in a tabular form and then you give your signature that okay, this is the machine on which this is the parameter on which this machine is acceptable, not acceptable and things like that. So, I can say that in this lecture we have just talked about the basics of a uh, combined harvester what are the various unit operations which happen in a combined harvester, what are the importance of each and every um, uh, operation and the, um, and the component which is there, what sort of losses do take place and where one uh, as an engineer should be careful about that, what are the values which you should maintain while uh, from, uh, increasing or decreasing the forward speed of the machine because you have to maintain a real index and things like that. So, I think uh, we have taken care of the harvesting with respect to the combined harvesters and the smaller harvesters for, for uh, cereals, uh, uh, the root crops, fruit crops, etc. And uh, well, you might have several questions in your mind which we can always answer as and when they required and look forward to your uh, other queries. Uh, I thank you very much.